So apparently yesterday was the first day of summer and honestly it's felt like summer for the past few weeks, but I thought to ring in the start of summer and celebrate the start of summer, my personal favorite season, we could do some really simple sewing projects. Now I love sewing in the summertime because you can find a lot of really simple sewing projects and you can make things that don't require a lot of fussy details and still get a really beautiful project out of it. And for today's video, I'm just doing projects that can be made out of a rectangle of fabric, which means no pattern. You don't need a pattern to sew any of these garments. You just need a couple of body measurements. I was inspired for these projects by my recent trip to Spain. And when I was packing for that trip, one of the garments that I made for the trip was just a really simple tube top with straps. And it was one of the easiest projects I've ever made. And I have been wearing that tank top like crazy lately. So I think I need to make myself another one. Also, when I was in Spain, I purchased a really pretty dress from a store called Sephara. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the construction was just so simple. It was basically a rectangle with pleats added across the bust to add a little bit of shaping. And it made a really cute swimsuit cover up. It could also be worn a little bit dressier. So it was a really versatile dress for summer. And I really wanted to do a dupe of that dress. The tank top that I made for my trip, the tube top, I made that out of just a really nice rib knit fabric that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics. And I also bought some green of the same fabric. And I just really liked this kind of basic army green color color. And yeah, I think I want to make myself a tank top out of this. And then for the pleated dress, I think I want to do that out of a linen. I'm going to think on that one a little bit and I might make a little trip to the fabric store to pick up some linen. Okay, let's do this. So I'm just going to take a tape measure here and wrap it around the fullest part of my bust around the back. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to get it somewhat parallel with the floor. Mine's about 37 and a half inches for the fullest part of my bust. You'll also want to get a general measurement for the length of the bodice that you think you'll want. And to do this, I'm just, again, gonna take my tape, take my tape measure. And I'm gonna start about right here. This is kind of about where my bra strap meets the top of my bra. I'm just gonna measure down. Under the bust is about seven or eight inches. I'm just gonna go with eight inches. And then if I continue that down to the waistband where I want it to stop, it's about 15 inches. So I think total, I'll probably do, uh, I'll probably go with 17 inches just to be safe. And then I can trim away anything that I don't need. I'm starting out with two inches of negative ease for this tube top and I have a feeling I might end up needing to take off even more of that but that's just because I know that the fabric that I used before was exactly like this and I had to take out quite a bit of ease because it was so stretchy but I think starting out with maybe taking off an inch to two inches off of the total ease on the on the fabric especially if it's a very stretchy fabric and then that'll kind of give you some wiggle room for taking out additional ease if you need to. So for this one, since my bust measurement was 37 and a half inches, that'll give me 35 and a half inches. And if I do the math, let's see, 35.5 divided by two is 17.75 inches. And the width of this is actually now 17 and a half inches. And I think that that still is gonna give me enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the two pieces, one for the front, one for the back, 17 and a half inches wide. I also want to create a little shelf bra inside of the tube top because when I made the first one I noticed that without that extra layer of fabric in there it just I didn't really like the way it laid across my bust. I'm just going to cut two more pieces that are 17 and a half inches wide and the length I'll make it the same length as that kind of under bust measurement. So it was about eight inches. I'm going to add an inch just for extra coverage and again if i need to trim it i can always trim it that'll also give me a little bit of seam allowance and if i did want to add in elastic that would give me something to attach the elastic to i also cut myself a long strip of fabric that i'm going to use for the straps and i made this about three and a half inches wide i really want some very wide straps um, and i'm going to finish these basically in a tube like so so the strap will be about i don't know maybe an inch and a half to two inches wide 
Um, but I cut this as one long strip. I'm gonna finish the strap first, then I'll trim it to size and then attach it to the tube top. So now I have my two bodice pieces right sides together as well as the little shelf bra. And the wrong side of this has a little bit kind of flat texture to it. So I wanna make sure that I put these right sides together. And I'll just sew along each edge with probably a quarter inch to three eighths inch seam allowance on both sides. And I'll do the same thing for the little shelf bra here. Okay, so before I add in the shelf bra, I just wanted to test the fit of this. And so, I mean, it fits fine across the bust, but it is quite baggy around the waist and due to the nature of this fabric, because it is a little bit heavier, I think I actually want this to be much more fitted because I think it'll help with some of those, you know, extra bulgy parts around the waistline and the back. And I went through this with the first one that I made too because this is so thick. So that's really gonna be up to personal preference how tight you wanna make this. I'm gonna take this in another inch, both sides, try it back on, and then whatever I end up taking off of this main shell part, I'll also take that off of the liner for the shelf bra. Okay, so I like the fit of that much better. I want the front to be a little bit higher than the back because right now I need to take a little bit of length off the back. So I'm actually gonna taper it down in the back a little bit so that it's a little bit lower in the back. So I'm just gonna fold the bodice in half with the side seams matching and I'm going to taper from the front, curve it down and taper to the back. And that way it'll be a little bit lower in the back and I'll also be able to tell the difference between the front and the back. Before I attach the shelf bra to the main shell, I just want to get the location of my straps. Oh, a couple of things that I did. I tapered in at the top of the tube top here just to kind of add a little bit of extra attention across the top of the bust. Because one thing that I noticed in my last one, I did have a little bit of gaping like when I would lean over. So I did end up having to tighten that up a little bit just, just up here. Anyway, I think that just kind of helps it fit a little bit better across the high bust. So then I made some straps and all I did to make the straps was sew that one long strip into a tube. Then I pressed the seam allowance open, turned it right side out, and then pressed it so that the seam allowance was on the center of the underside basically. And then I just cut the strip in two to have two straps. So I've pinned it to the back here. I kind of just like safety pinned it where I thought it might go. Obviously it doesn't quite cover my bra. I'm gonna need to move it in about an inch and then just pull it over to the front, get it as tight as I think I'll want it. Um, I'm making sure that I make it nice and tight because again, the first one that I made um, probably wasn't quite tight enough. And then I'm just gonna pin that in place over my bra strap. So that way if I wanted to wear a bra with it, I could. So now I just want to align the straps with the notches that I created and I'll align it on the back first, sandwiched between the shelf bra layer and the outer shell layer. And I'm putting the shelf bra wrong side to right side so that when I flip the shelf bra to the interior, the more smooth side will be against my skin. I just think that'll be a little bit more comfortable. Once I get the straps attached on the back, I'm just gonna flip the whole assembly over and pull out the strap, making sure that the right side is facing up, then I'm gonna fold that over and insert it on the front and align with the notch. Again, just sandwiching it between the two layers. And then I'm just gonna sew around the perimeter of these two layers, making sure to sew across the top of the straps on both the front and the back. And 
it's mostly done. The only thing left to do, well, a couple of things left to do, is to understitch the lining to the seam allowance here, and then make sure I press that seam allowance toward the lining, toward the shelf bra, and then I would just understitch all the way around the edge just to make sure that that lining stays turned toward the inside. And then that way you'd have a clean finish on the exterior. Now the knit can get a little stretched out when you're doing that understitching, so you wanna be careful not to pull it too much, but it does just kinda of get a little bit waffly. But then you just need to hit it with the iron and it usually will straighten out a good bit. I'll also do a little stitch in the ditch here to connect the shelf bra on the interior at the side seam so that it'll just kind of anchor that down. So I'll just kind of make sure right at the bottom there I stitch that down um, in the seam of the side seam. That way that shelf bra will stay pulled down. And similar to how I did for the top of the tank top, I'm going to trim it a little bit shorter in the back than I did in the front. So in the front I'm just going to trim it two inches and in the back I'm going to trim it about three inches. And this particular fabric does not fray and it also does not roll. So I'm not even gonna worry about putting a hem on this. If you're using a different type of knit fabric, I would recommend just turning it once under and then doing a zigzag stitch all the way around. I also wanna make sure that I tack at the hem where I trimmed that just so that the stitching doesn't come loose there. So I'm just gonna do a quick little back stitch there. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is make an assessment of the design of this dress. So it's basically a rectangle that has been pleated at the top of the bodice here. And let's see, let me get my tape measure. The pleating goes down approximately eight inches from the top. And then the overall width of this dress, if we measure from the bottom, is about, 32 and a half inches, so that would be 65 inches total for the total circumference of this dress. And then at the top, the pleating takes that width down to about 18 inches, which is 36 inches total circumference. So I think that the fit of this dress works perfectly for me. My full bust measurement, I think was something like 37 and a half inches around that. And, um, this part right here will sit kind of above the bust, obviously. It'll be at the high bust. And then even though this is pleated slightly smaller than my full bust, it still fit just fine. Um, and I think it was because of the way that, you know, this had a little extra ease around the top here. So it was able to drape over my bust just fine. So I'm gonna stick with these measurements. And so basically I just need to make it 65 inches wide at the bottom plus seam allowance and then subtract the 36 inches from that 35 or I'm sorry the 65 inches and then figure out how deep to make each of these pleats and I've already counted the pleats there are eight pleats across the front and eight pleats across the back so it's basically symmetrical on both the front and the back the only thing that I noticed that I don't know if this is absolutely necessary 
but the back is divided into two pieces so there's a seam down the back here. I almost wonder if they did that just so that it would be easier to tell the back because I don't think that there's any extra shaping here. There is a side seam so it's not like it's one piece that's connected in the back. Oh also this dress has pockets so I will be adding pockets here. These are just little simple inseam pockets on each side and the pockets are how far down? So if I measure from the top down to the top of the pocket. The pocket is about nine inches down from the top of the bodice here. And then I will worry about the straps later. Another thing too, um, just to note the construction here. So they used a binding to finish off the top edge of this dress. So I'll do the same. And then the strap where it attaches to the top of the bodice is just sandwiched between that binding and the bodice. So it's a very, very simple construction. And then it just has a wide hem at the bottom. And then I also want to measure the overall length of this. So it goes to about 45 inches, which you can't see that <laughs> because it's off the screen, but this is about 45 inches long total. So I'll just add about three eighths inch for the top seam allowance. And then I'll add another two to three inches for the hem allowance. I also went in and measured the distance between each of the pleats and they are about two inches. Okay, so I went to Joanne yesterday and I was trying to find some linen that I thought would be really nice for this dress. And I did find some white linen, it's like a, it might be a linen viscose blend. Um, and after I washed it and dried it, I didn't really love the drape of it. It felt a little too stiff. And I think that this dress really needs a fabric that drapes really well, like a rayon. <laughs> so I have this rayon in my stash and I got this a couple of years ago. This was gifted to me from, I think the name of the brand is GK Fashion Fabrics is the name of the company that sells the fabrics. Um, they gifted this to me a long time ago and I really love this fabric and I just wasn't sure for the longest time what to make out of it and I have quite a bit of it so I think it'll be really nice for this dress and I was kind of draping it on my body earlier today and I thought you know what I think this will be actually just right. I really like the pattern too. It's kind of it kind of has a little bit of a um, almost not really geometric but it's a it's kind of a modern print and but far away it looks more like kind of a polka dot and I think this will be really nice. It's very lightweight, very comfy. It's already been washed. It's ready to be made into something. So I am going to use this for the dress. I think it'll be perfect and I have a lot of it. So I think it'll be plenty long enough. And yeah, that's the plan. I was measuring this fabric and the width of my fabric is only 55 inches. So it's 27 inches folded in 27 and a half inches folded in half. And the width of the dress at the widest point was like 65 inches, I believe. I have enough of this fabric to cut two pieces that are what, 32 ish inches wide, but I really would like to be able to use this fabric for something else as well. And um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and have the total circumference of the dress be basically the width of fabric and a little bit less because of seam allowance. The width of this dress will end up being, gosh, probably about 10 inches narrower than this dress. I think it'll be okay because my total hip width at the widest point is about 42 to 43 inches and that will give me over 10 inches of ease in the hips, which I think is plenty. And that way I can kind of utilize the fabric a little bit more efficiently and I can probably get another project. I thought I might make some shorts, my favorite McCall's shorts pattern out of this fabric as well at another time later down the road. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna make this a little bit more narrow than the inspiration dress over here. And I think it'll be fine. I'll just have to kind of edit the depth of my pleats that I'm gonna put in the top of the bodice. the total width of my dress is the 27.5 inches times two. So I've got 55 inches and then I want to subtract 36 inches because that's the final, that's the final width that I want it to be at the bodice. So minus 36 inches, that'd be 19 inches. And then I'm going to divide that by eight. So actually no 16 because I have eight on the front and eight on the back. So we're looking at about one and what is that an eighth of an inch almost or almost a quarter inch so i'll do these roughly an inch of depth for the pleats and then i will space them two inches apart for the front and the back i'll do eight on the front eight on the back and that's how i'll get the bodice down to that width 
I'm gonna start by going ahead and pleating all of the fabric first before I start assembling everything. This process I think will probably take the longest, but once it's done, it's done. And then the rest of the dress should come together pretty quickly. I'll add the pockets and do all of that. So I'm gonna start by folding this right sides together in half lengthwise. So this is one side, we'll call this the front. Now that I know that this is the center front of this dress, I'm gonna measure out an inch from the center because this will be two inches when it's unfolded. And make a little clip mark there with my scissors, okay? Okay, so there's my two marks on either side of this center front. So I'm just gonna start on the right side here. And now I'm gonna mark about an inch away from that. Mark there. Okay, then I will match up those two notches for that inch there. Again, right sides together. Okay, I've got those matched up and then I'm just gonna pin that. Let me pin it like this. I just wanna fold this down the entire length here and make sure that it's, it's evenly folded down the front here. So I'm just kind of aligning it here. I'll use my tape measure to measure the distance of the fold. It is 12 inches. I'll just go through and measure at different points. Actually, I only need to measure down like nine or 10, nine inches actually. That's 12 inches there. And then I'm gonna kind of flatten this out. Okay, so I'm putting a mark right there. I'm just gonna press this fold right here, like so. And then I will take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew with a half inch seam allowance from the top here where my notches are down to this point here, which is about nine inches from the top. And then I will press that and measure for the next pleat. And I wanna to press toward the side seam. So I'm just gonna press that really quick. Then I will turn it right side up and I'm going to measure from that first pleat that I sewed two inches over there. I'll just use a pin for this one and then stick a pin in it. And then I'll do an inch from that point there for the next pleat. I'll hold these right sides together, align the pins. Take that out there. And then I'll do the same thing to create the next pleat, measuring the distance of the fold. So this one is nine inches. So again, nine inches, and I wanna do this nine inches down. So I'll put a pin here and then press the fold. And I'll sew again with the half inch seam allowance from the fold edge. And I'm just gonna continue this process to create all the pleats. So I have added the pleats on both sides of the bodice, so on the front and the back. And it's kind of hard to see here, but I've got all the pleats. There's eight across the front and eight across the back. After I had sewn all of the pleats in, I just did a stay stitch across the top of the bodice on both the front and the back, just to prevent that from stretching out as we finish the construction. So the next thing that I need to do before I attach the front and the back bodice together is attach the pockets. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll do nine and a half just to give myself a little extra for seam allowance at the top. Okay, I'm gonna put a pin there. And then I also cut out four mirrored pocket pieces. And I just used my pocket piece from my comfy pants pattern and just trimmed the top so that it would be rounded at the top. You basically just want like a bean shape pocket. So I'm gonna align the top of the pocket 
with the side seam right sides together of the bodice. And I'm gonna line that with that pin there at the top and I'm just gonna pin that in place along the side seam. Then I'm gonna sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach the pocket at the side seam here. And I'll do the same thing to attach all four pockets to the dress, two on the front, two on the back. Then I'm just gonna flip this over so that it's wrong side facing up. And because I wanna do a French seam on the side seam, I wanna finish the edge of the pocket where it attaches to the side seam first. And what I'm gonna do is actually clip into the seam allowance of just the dress about a quarter inch away from the bottom of the pocket. So I'm just coming in just a little bit here and I'm just gonna clip that seam allowance right to the side seam. I'll do the same thing for the top. And again, a quarter inch in from the top of the pocket. Then I just want to trim down the seam allowance of the actual pocket. And I'm actually gonna press this open to do this. And I'm trimming that down about half. And I'm gonna do a little flat felled seam with the seam allowance that I clipped into for the side seam. So I'll press the entire seam allowance over toward the dress. Now I'm just gonna fold the dress seam allowance over, whoops, basically in half and press that. Then I'm gonna fold all of that back toward the pocket. So now that seam allowance of the pocket is concealed in that flat felled seam. You can always do a larger seam allowance if you want to have a little bit easier time with doing these flat filled seams and then we will eventually get to a French seam as well. Um, but if you're working with a fabric like rayon, I highly recommend doing a really tiny seam allowance. It'll just make the fabric lay a little bit nicer once it's finished. So now I'm just going to go in and top stitch that flat filled seam to the pocket. And I'll do this for all four pockets. Now I've pinned the front and the back of the dress wrong sides together so that right sides are facing out because I'm gonna do a French seam along the side seam around the pocket and all the way down to the hem. And the reason that I trimmed, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the reason that I trimmed the seam allowance of the dress before I did that little flat felled seam at the pocket edge is so that that seam will, is so that that seam allowance will lay flat when I go and do the French seam. Okay, so I have the dress, basic shape and fit finished. I love this. I'll be honest, when I first got this fabric, I was like, gosh, I really don't know what I'm gonna make out of this fabric, which is why I've kept it in my stash for like two years. And well, no, it's, it hasn't been quite two years, but it's been a while. I've had this fabric for a long time and I think it is perfect for this type of dress. And I think also the 
width of the skirt is perfect. I don't think that it really needs to be super wide. I mean, the other one looks fine, but I actually kind of like the slimmer shape of this one a little bit better. Um, anyhow, I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the straps and the original dress has the little spaghetti straps, but I think I might do something a little different with the straps on this. So I was kind of thinking about doing a slightly wider strap and then having it tie at the top because I don't have any of the little strap adjuster rings, um, to make the just the straps adjustable. And I would like a little bit of flexibility there. So I think I will just do have it just tie at the top and keep it really simple. So I'm going to do that. I made four straps to use as ties on the dress. So I'll have two on the front, two on the back, and I made these about 28 inches long. And I just cut a two inch wide strip of fabric and then folded the edges to the center and then folded it in half to create a half inch wide strap. So I've got four of these here. I'll put two on the front, two on the back, and then these will tie above the shoulder. I have attached the straps to the top of the dress. And first I just basted those in place right sides together and the strap was like down this way. And then I sandwiched the strap between the dress and the binding that goes around the entire top of the dress. And for this binding, I just cut a strip of fabric that was an inch and a half wide, folded that into thirds and pressed it and then attached it around the top of the dress to conceal the end of the strap and also finish the top of the dress and then folded that down and top stitched it all the way around the perimeter. And then the straps are just tied at the top. So the only thing left to do now is to hem the dress. Mm -hmm. 